we are streaming live. Here we go. Yes. Welcome, Paula Allen. Welcome to Let's Go Live with Jack Kelly to talk about the future of work. And wow, we have a perfect guest for you folks today because Paula is well equipped to help out with all these events that are happening now. The, the war, you know, the Russia war on the Ukraine and how it it's making us feel and how we can kind of cope and deal with these issues and more things. But let's do this. Paul, maybe you could introduce yourself, talk about your company, what you do. And then, and then I think we have a lot of good questions for you. And I think you could help a lot of people. Yeah. yeah anyway, ha very, very happy to be here, uh, Jack, especially during this, this, this time. We've certainly been through a lot and are going through a lot. Uh, I'm uh, the global leader of research at LifeWorks and an SVP with the company. And just to tell you a little bit about LifeWorks, we are a global organization. We're in 180 different countries. And what we do is we help organizations help their people be at their best. So from a mental health point of view, from a financial health point of view, uh, physical, social health, uh, we really provide services to make sure that employees have resources such as counseling to help them deal with issues as they come up. But we also help organizations make decisions and we also help them uh, equip their leaders uh, to be really supportive of, of mental and, and overall well-being in the workplace. So I couldn't ask for a better guest. And this is going to come across crass a little bit, but given the time period, I mean, who better than you to help out? You know, and the, and the biggest thing I wonder, how could leaders of companies take care of their people in this time? What, what are some of the things that if you're in management, and you have your workers, and and we talked about this before we went live. I'm I'm free to admit it. I'm kind of rattled. You know what I mean? I, it's hard for me to focus. I'm not I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to be honest. It's really hard. It's been hard for me the last few days to really get hyper focused on what I'm doing because a lot of times I'm doing something like this is so meaningless in the scheme of things. It's silly, and I imagine I'm not alone in this. But maybe I'm just being honest about it. Most people keep it to themselves. So what would you suggest for leadership at companies? to do to their employees, because they may not come out and say like I did, like, hey, I'm just messed up, Matt, right now in terms of figuring out how to lead my life and work. Do you have yeah, any suggestions? I, well, I, absolutely. So number one, asking the question about leaders is a good way to, to start because leaders can make a huge difference. And when, we're, when you're talking about, you know, just the circumstances of today and being rattled, there's a lot in that. You know, obviously we have this massive concern and, and global concern around the, the upheaval in, in the U Ukraine, uh, but we're also dealing, and we haven't really felt uh, there any kind of resolution from some of the upheaval and vulnerability that we've had over the last two years. So we're actually going into this situation a yes. little bit raw. See, so that's, that's, I mean, exactly like two years of just fear, anxiety, worry, losing loved ones, being sick yourself, and, and almost, and, and then, Paul, is it something too where you have COVID, and then it's like, okay, we're almost done, then you have Delta, like, and then after Delta, I'm, oh, does that also add to the psychological almost torture, and now you put on top of this? Yeah, yeah, without question. I mean, just even starting with what happened at the beginning of the pandemic, was, the rug really got pulled out from under us from a psychological point of view. You know, what people need is, is the sense of, of control. What they need is a sense of predictability. Like the human mind craves that. No matter how adventurous you, 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 you label yourself, you, you don't like things to be random outside of your control. We, we, we really don't do well as human beings when we are isolated from other human beings and, and look at what the pandemic did it took all of those things that we we essentially need for our best well-being away for good reason you know we we had to deal with the situation but it was definitely destabilizing from a psychological point of view so we saw a massive drop in mental health in, increase in anxiety a tripling of the, the the working population that's considered a high risk and on top of that, it wasn't just one event. You know, it wasn't just, it happens, you adapt, you move on. 
you know, the uncertainty, the upheaval kept going. And you mentioned Delta and then Omicron. So it, it felt even worse because when we saw the light at the end of the tunnel or we thought we did, it wasn't quite there. So there was, there was a real impact on our, our optimism. So what happened was we had this anxiety, we had this increase in mental health issues, people who were on the edge really kind of went into crisis. And then the full population really just experienced massive exhaustion. So even if you weren't in that high risk category, there's no way that this didn't impact you. There's no way that you didn't feel a drain on you. There's no way that you didn't feel some frustration and it didn't have it impact your well-being, even to a certain extent. And we are now at a place after two years, think about it, two years of strain. When you're under two years, when you're doing something for two years, when your life is disrupted for two years, it doesn't just snap back. That, just, that doesn't happen. We are at a place right now where what we're picking up in the population is just a high sensitivity to stress. So you're under stress for a long period of time. You actually respond with, you know, in a kind of a, uh, a fight or flight way to things that you might have respond not re not have responded in that way to before. There's actually an a, um, an increase in the size of your brain, even mine is small, but the, si the, the part of your brain that has that kind of fight or flight reaction. So you've seen it, I'm sure. You know, there's the stories we hear in airplanes. There, you talk to your about uh, your barista around what it's like to serve people in a coffee shop right now. You know, the edge, the cynicism, the kind of that stress response is is part of of, of our society right now. So that's where we are right now as a result of the pandemic. And then you add this Ukraine situation on top of that. And it's, it's not something that we can just say, okay, well, let me just, you know, we'll go back to whatever I was doing and forget about it. We really need it to be intentional about how we move forward from a mental health point of view. I'm glad at one point you mentioned about exhaustion. Because exhaustion. I've been feeling that, <clears throat> particularly lately. And then I'm like, well, is it because I'm getting older? Is that what it is? Is it because I have two dogs and two cats and they get me up at, no exaggeration, four in the morning to feed them and, and maybe that? Or that's just a normal response to two years of just unrelenting stress and anxiety that you just, well, the well, body wears down, right? Your body does wear down. And, you know, and especially in the beginning, you know, there was so much to do. We had to figure out a whole bunch of things. We had to figure out kids. We had to figure out, you know, how we're going to cope. We had to figure out uh, our work situations. You know, that that was draining. There was a lot of adrenaline and that adrenaline just can't can't keep up. And it is exhausting. You know, it is exhausting to just have this strain and uncertainty. You know, your your brain is working on on overdrive. And, and then the third thing that is contributing to this exhaustion is not so much what we do, because people often think of exhaustion as I'm doing too much. A lot of this exhaustion is because of what we're not doing, because we, did, we lost a lot of the variety in our day-to-day -day lives. And, and that's restorative. You know, if, you, if, you, if, you, if your world is a little bit smaller, and make no mistake about it, even though we've, we've opened up and we've gotten back to normal in a lot of places, People's behavior has not gotten back to the way it, it was before. You know, there's a lot more comfort and not a positive comfort in doing less, having a smaller world, not doing, not having as much social contact as we did before. And that's not healthy for our brain. We need to make sure that we have a variety of experiences, especially social experiences, and that gives us energy. So there's so much that's contributing to this exhaustion right now. I'm very glad that you you picked up on that particular yeah. point. You, when you talked about fi <clears throat> fight or flight, mm -hmm. uh, watching so <clears throat> watching social media lately, it's this. I see this bubbling up where you know. Let's, they're not coming out right and say, hey, let's go to war. Let's bomb them. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's kick every Russian out of, I think, I want to say a congressman was saying, hey, let's kick every Russian, you know, student out of the US. And, and is that part of that fight or flight where you get caught up in emotions about what's happening in the Ukraine and it gets easy for the emotions to rule instead of common sense. And then 
you know, the U.S. and other countries could be dragged into it because you get this, you know, you know, rah, rah, let's, let's bomb them. How dare they? And before you know it, it puts us in a worse space as opposed to just taking a step back and say, wait, wait, we went through two years, complete stress and anxiety. We have this, you know, you haven't seen a war for what, 70 years in Europe. And so this is a kind of, you know, we're not used to this in my lifetime, your lifetime. Um, and now we're going to overreact. Is this something that you feel like you would say, hey, everyone has to, you know, just just calm down and don't act out of just pure emotion and fear or fear of flight? Yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's two parts to that, that fight or flight. I'd mentioned, you know, when you're under a long period of strain, um, the, the part of your brain that kind of is impulsive gets bigger, slightly bigger. Uh, but the other thing that happens is that the part of your brain that has emotional regulation, control and rational thoughts you know, that ends up being a little bit more compromised. So we do have to be intentional about working against that. Right? So just when you need it, your body works yeah. against you in yeah, a way, right? So, so, so what you're saying is exactly the time you need to be rational, calm, thoughtful. You, you, it doesn't work that way. You're, we're wired not to work that way. Okay. So well, yeah. kind of. <laughs> Unfortunately, but you know what? We 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 also have choices, you know. And this is the time to actually to exercise our choices. And our choices are not to just let our impulses uh, take take over, because this is going to have long term consequences. Even if it has short term consequences, yeah. even if it has small interpersonal consequences, it has consequences. So you know, I, I really want people to understand that we are in this kind of you know high vigilance mode, you know, you know, impulsive mode where we're more quick to anger, we're a bit more cynical, because when you have that awareness, then you can control that. You can take that step back, and I think it's super important for us to do that because the last thing that we want to do is to make decisions that will have long-term consequences because of short-term emotional responses like this is when we have to we have to be intentional and kind of rebuild and re-engage that rational thought more than anything else for our own benefit as well as others so frustrating because Oftentimes, the voices you hear are the ones who are the loudest and shrieking, and not the ones who are giving what you're saying. You have calm, yeah. rational. How do you? How do you? How do we change that narrative? Where it's more people like yourself who just could walk through? Because the way you're walking through, it's so logical. Like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe we should just all cool down, cooler he heads prevail. Let's not do anything rash. Let's think about it. But yet, more often than not, our politicians on social media, on Twitter, it's more of just just complete extreme. Is that a thing? Like, like the normal, you know, calm voices get trampled on. Well, calm isn't exciting, right? <laughs> if, you know, I, I, and, I, and I think we have a responsibility to make sure that, you know, we take responsibility for what we listen to because it's not, it's not insignificant. You know, if you feed your mind with things that are, are going to put you in a, a state where you're feeling, you know, volatile, when you, you know, you don't have access to balanced information, you don't, you don't, you don't reinforce that kind of process of logical thought, it'll hurt you. You know, it will hurt you. Like your own emotion will begin become extreme. Uh, your own decision making inside your life, as well as you know what you what you purport and, and recommend for for others, is, is not going to be healthy. So I think you know again the whole idea is an intention when you're talking about well being, you're talking about a process that isn't passive. You're talking about making sure that you ha have flexibility, but make, making sure that you listen, giving your, you, you the permission to speak as well. If you, have, if you have thoughts, if you have concerns, there's many things that each of us has to do as opposed to be passive and consuming the, the, the shiniest re rhetoric. And, and again, I'm putting it in a context as not only being important for us as a society, it's important for the mental health and well-being of each individual to take that more rational and balanced approach to thought. Now, are there specific things people could do? Like maybe exercise, go for a run, do yoga, eat more healthily, get off junk food. I mean, is there kind of a how-to almost to say, all right, we're undeniably in a stressful situation. And hopefully, as you mentioned, maybe it won't last that long, but let's presume it does. 
So what could, could people watching now and then when we kind of re-upload it, when people watch it again, what can they do to just kind of recognize, hey, I'm just lashing out, <laughs> I'm stressed. How do I just get myself just to be calm and just go about my life normally and do what I can do? Yeah, well, there's definitely a, a few things. Okay. Um, you know, the, the, the one that I'm going to bring out first is the one that we often take for granted, and that's other people. You know, we are, we as human beings are wired to benefit from being in a community. You know, when we, when we have extreme stress, just feeling that you have a sense of belonging with somebody else and have that social support and being able to talk about what your fears are and, and concerns are and have someone else listen, that wraps around the world twice in its benefit. We actually mm. physically see people's stress levels go down. And, you know, and if you even take it an extreme, you know, people who are living in situations where there are bombs going off, you know, there's real upheaval. When you see those societies and how they cope, you know, one of the things is that social support, you know, families getting together and singing and playing games and telling stories and just making sure that they feel connected. It might seem trivial, you know, like, why are you doing this? But it is so important for us to see, keep, uh, to stay balanced, just to have those positive relationships with others. You know, it's not, you know, often we talk about, you know, things like meditation and things of that sort, and they all have their place but they can't replace other people. You know, you're not going to deal with your stress on a long-term basis by staying home and watching streaming videos. That's not gonna do it, but you can build up resilience if you feel that sense of connection, if you show gratitude, if you, if you receive it, uh, if you just have those positive uh, experiences with others. So again, I, I think we just need to make sure that we do not isolate ourselves during the, this time. Now, how do you do this for a lot of people? It's when you withdrew from society in a way, but not in a way because of COVID and yeah. your circle gets smaller. Yeah. And now you want to say, okay, I'm ready. I need <laughs> that human company. I need to do something. But you look around like, who am I going to call? Like, what's, <laughs> what's a good way to start? And could companies maybe help out by having, you know, kind of Zoom meetings together? Any, any ideas for both? the company to help out their employees, but then individuals to say, all right, I got to rebuild my friendships from scratch. What do I do? Or my social, okay. any, any tips? Yeah, well, again, for, from, a, from a personal point of view as well, yeah. um, there is some research that, that actually says that we're a little bit scared to. <laughs> we're a little bit feeling more socially awkward than we did before because, you know, people have forgotten how to date, for example, um, because a lot of that was put, put on hold. And I think we just take it one step at a time, you know, just because something feels a little bit uncomfortable in the moment doesn't mean that it's not good for you. You know, just, just because, you know, exercise is a good example. It doesn't feel comfortable in the moment very often, but, you know, there's benefits that you reap afterwards. So take it one step at a time. You know, realize everybody is in the, in the same, same boat. You know, if you reach out to someone, then the, the response back more than ever, more than, more than not, is, is gratitude. You know, just spending some time talking, asking how somebody is, going for a walk, going for a coffee, one step at a time, the worst thing that you could do is do nothing. Uh, because again, our worlds have gotten a lot smaller. And that actually exacerbates the isolation that we were suffering with from before the pandemic. And for sure, that impacts your mental health. But it is so damaging. Isolation is so damaging that the stress on your body, whether you feel it in the moment or not, the stress on your body actually makes you more vulnerable to cardiovascular issues as well as immune system disorders. So it makes sense to make that investment. Paul, what do you feel about this? Because during, especially during the pandemic, everything was accelerating. So it became really comfortable to be at home. You know, yeah. you, you have DoorDash bringing you the food, Amazon delivery, literally like the same day, whatever you need. You have Netflix, Amazon Prime. Think about it. It's in a way you became so comfortable that you don't have to leave. Now, 
when I was a kid, you didn't have that. You had three, what, three, five channels, two, five, seven, and nine, whatever it was. And you definitely didn't have Netflix and all the other stuff. And you didn't have all the food delivery. So you had to go out and do stuff. You had no choice. But what, what do people do? Who, and then there's a, I, I didn't know how big it is, but gaming is so big. You know, obviously being online is so big. Now we're going to have the metaverse where people, is this something we're going to have to fight about in the future to get to push people to say, get off the couch, get out of your house, get out of your apartment and get outside, you know, yeah. turn off the metaverse, turn off the internet, turn off everything. And just, are you seeing that people having problems doing that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 we are seeing evidence of that. And, and again, it started before the pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, nobody needs the, the community to build the barn <laughs> anymore. Yeah. You know, there's many things that have, have happened that made it possible for us to be more isolated. And, and that's been one of the most negative factors in our mental health over the past several dec decades, but we, we have to work against it. I mean, it's no choice. When, when, when I was talking about stress, the first thing that I brought out, because I think it's one of the most important, is uh, that social support. But there, there are other things as well. Uh, and one other thing is just really a variety of experiences. You know, your brain is built to have a variety of experiences. If you're just working and ordering and nothing, <laughs> then your brain doesn't have that variety of experiences. That's going to contribute to your exhaustion. It's gonna to contribute to your vulnerability. We need simple change of scenery. We need that physical stimulation from just movement, not even necessarily mm -hmm. cardiovascular exercise, which is also important for other reasons, just getting around and moving. We need, uh, we, we need things that make us laugh, things that put us in a different place in terms of our emotion. You know, think about if you had a child who they only had one experience. They only worked at schoolwork, only worked in math even, and then did nothing. There's nobody who would say that that's a healthy childhood, but it's no more healthy if you're an adult to have these narrow and small worlds that we're starting to build for ourselves. Are you worried about the youth of today in the sense that they're under, I mean, imagine that you're a young person Growing up, put on your mask. Oh my God, you're going to get this. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. The doom, the gloom. Does that do something to them? Is that going to either make them hardier in the future, like toughen them up? Or are you going to have, like you said, people who just was stuck at home for years and now they're just social skills have deteriorated or well, I think that I think the concern around uh, children, you know, it's it, it really depends on their circumstance as well, and, and the adults around them. Like, you know, there's so many examples of things that could go in one way yeah. or another. So, you know, just the just the issue of of, of masks. You know, if the adults around around them are angry about it, they're over anxious about what it's going to do for their breathing capacity. You know, if they're filled with you know negative emotions about this this this, this thing that we are doing right now, that's going to have one impact. If the adults around them are, are basically shaping this as, you know, this is your job, this is your responsibility, you've got to take care of yourself, you've got to take care of other people, this is what we're doing right now, it won't be uh, uh, forever, but, you know, it's, it's a different way of shaping the response and a different way of actually helping children build flexible thought. Because that, you know, optimism, you know, people talk about optimism and it's great, it gives you energy and all the rest of that stuff. But, you know, very often people think of optimism as, you know, everything is uh, rosy, you know, I can, that's not it. You know, the, the really the driver of optimism is flexible thought. You, you see situations, it could be good, it could be bad, it could be whatever, but you have to have confidence that you'll be able to adapt. You're thinking about it in a way about how can I make the best of the situation? What is my job here? What is my focus at this moment? And, and that kind of flexible thought builds a lot of resilience as opposed to expecting things to be perfect because that builds a lot of disappointment or getting overreacted uh, when you see things that you don't like and, and catastrophizing about it. 
So I think you know parents have a lot, and, and adults and news media a lot to do with 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 kids. Uh, but I also think we have to be realistic. You know that this whole thing about this isolation that we've been uh, moving towards as a society, I think is the biggest risk for our next generation. So having the awareness that we need other people, having the awareness that we need this variety of experiences, you know, really working against, you know, going down this, this fairly negative uh, river, I think is what's necessary for the next generation and, and the generation after that. See, I'm an optimist. And I think that <laughs> Gen Z's, my kids are Gen Z's, and I think they dealt you know, they were born around 9-11 after 9-11, the financial crisis, all the politics of 2016, COVID, now having to worry about World War III. I kind of think it's going to tougher them up. I think it's going to, you know, what is the expression? Something like tough times make tough, you know, people, something of that nature. So I'm, I'm being optimistic that that's going to kind of strengthen them. So the next iteration of bad news, they'd be like, yeah, all right, we'll deal with it. <laughs> We've dealt with Everything else, this is just another one. This is part of our lives now. We have to deal with it. And they can have very thick skin and be able to, to really go above and beyond. Am I being too optimistic or, or is, it, is that how people can react to these things? No, I don't think you're being too optimistic. And I do remember when this pandemic started, you know, speaking to my mom and, you know, basically said, you know, things will always happen and things will always get better. And she named some of the things that she's lived through it in her life. And I was, I was floored. Like, it's just, it is, it's kind of amazing to, to see that process. But I, I think we all also have to be realistic that that, that doesn't always happen for everyone. You know, in, in, in certain situations, the, the loss, the lack of control, uh, the, the anxiety, you know, everything can just feel overwhelming. And, and think about it like, you know, your physical body. You only build muscle when you put strain on that muscle, but the muscle only builds when that strain can be tolerated. It happens in doses. You know, you make sure that you have a recovery period. You know, there's there's things that actually help you develop a physical muscle, but the but strain actually does build the muscle to your point of the thick skin. But if you have strain that is overwhelming, it's it's sudden, you don't have the environment that kind of helps you actually recover and cope, like social support, like the flexible thought, you know, like those things that actually help us build resilience, then the muscle gets damaged. So the same thing can happen to our minds. Like we have to make sure that number one, we have that environment, that personal work-related, you know, the self-created environment that helps us actually take this strain and build muscle from it. But when it does get overwhelming, people really need to reach out for professional support. I just, and it just hurts my heart when I hear so many people talk about well, it's not really bad enough. I'm going to wait till the situation gets bad enough because I'm not one of those people who need to have a, a counselor or, the, or a psychologist. What, what do you mean bad enough? <laughs> you, know, you, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, then that you're taking away your quality of life. And, and you know, who wants that for even a moment? When you're feeling overwhelmed, you could have longer term damage. And just like any other health issue, if you deal with it early, then you won't have that risk. So I'm not gonna wait until my cancer is at stage four before I actually tr get treatment. And I'm certainly not gonna want myself or anyone else to wait until it's quote unquote bad enough to get professional help. When, you, when we were talking about like fight or flight and, and all the other issues, is I take it it's reversible. So the same way, you know, you're saying the, the way your brain reacts and, and what have you, does it also mm -hmm. kind of then turn around if all of a sudden you start doing the things you're talking about, getting out there, meeting with people, socializing, re-entering re society, if you will, um, you know, doing a lot of good things for yourself, finding new hobbies. Does all of a sudden that kind of rewire you once again? So you're not as angry, you're not as, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, hostile and anxious or so you're not kind of stuck. There is the ability to change for the better, right? Without question, the, the, the brain is very, very quote unquote plastic, which means that it can change. The fact that it did change, you know, the fact that we are seeing indications that we do have this higher vulnerability shows that 
things can change and they can also change back. Um, and, and that's why I'm all, I'm, I'm really just preaching about that, the intentionality uh, about it. You know, if you just let things happen and some people, you know, because everybody has been going through a, a difficult time, very paradoxically, many of us are discounting our own feelings as a result. Well, of course, it's an upheaval. And of course, everybody is a little bit edgy and then this, that, and the other. And, and I'm no different. So I'll just let it ride out. No, you know, we, we, we need the social support. We need the variety of experience. We need to make sure that our thinking doesn't catastrophize uh, us. You know, we need to remember as well that everybody has been through strain before. That is one of the definition, defining points of, of, of life. And if you think back about how you've dealt with other strains in a positive way, you might remember that you've got more skills than you, than you, than you even realize and just bring them back out again. This might not be a fair question because everyone is different, but how would you know when that point is where I need help? You know, I need to speak to somebody. I need to find a professional to help out. Is there a certain kind of big warning lights that people who are watching this that, and again, you can't know what's in their head and what they're doing, but just generally speaking, that should be, okay, maybe you should start <laughs> looking for some help at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the most obvious is sometimes we don't recognize things in ourselves, but others recognize it. Like if, if people are commenting on, you know, are you okay? Your behavior is a little bit different. If you find yourself responding and in some in, in ways that are just not you, uh, that's, uh, a flag. If you find changes in your physical being, you know, your, your heart is racing a little bit more, more, quick, more quickly, you're having difficulty sleeping, you're feeling tension, increased pain, that's another flag. Uh, if you're just feeling overwhelmed, like you just can't see your way into the next step, you know, in a, in a clear path, not say it'll be okay, but a clear path to things getting better, what you can do, how things will move forward. Uh, if you in any way you start to feel helpless or, or, or hopeless, and, and, and these need, don't need to be overwhelming feelings, particularly helpless or hopeless, even if they're passing feelings, that's, that's really a, a trigger for you to to, to reach out to another person, you know, and, and very often when you're starting to feel it, you know, on an ongoing basis, that other person is probably best a professional. And when you say professional, where do you go to an organization like yours, or do you go to a therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, you know, because it gets daunting, like where, like I'm thinking as you're talking, where would I even go to at first to get it started? Do you have yeah, some suggestions? Oh yeah, definitely. There's many places that people can go and, and our organization is one where we exist to help people cope. We exist to help them be at their best and get through difficult times. Uh, whatever that time is, whether it's a trauma or work stress or whatever the situation is. So, um, you know, the, the service that we offer is employee assistance programs. So some people call them EAPs. And very often your employer has an employee assistance program. So it could be ours, LifeWorks, it could be someone else's, but many employers have that available. Sometimes employees don't know. So asking your manager, asking human resources, you know, what is available in terms of your, your benefits and programs, uh, that really is the, the, the first step. And managers can play a huge role there as well. We find that um, when managers are trained and they can see that little behavior change that I had mentioned, uh, they see something different, just have a wonderful conversation with people just saying that they care about them, you care about their well-being, uh, is there anything that they can do to help and just remind them that the employee assistance program is there. People's lives have been changed by that encouragement to take that positive step. So the one thing I would say is that an employee assistance program is completely confidential. You know, unless you tell someone, nobody will, will know that you've been. It's voluntary. It's there for your benefit. It's available not only for you, but your immediate family members, and you will have access to professional counseling and, and also some very practical solve, problem solving. Um, other places that people can go is that depending on where you're, you're residing, uh, there could be other uh, more, most often public health lines uh, that where you can reach out and you can get some immediate support in, 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 in including crisis uh, support. And the other place that you could go is your family physician. 
Uh, so your family physician can sometimes directly provide help or, or make referrals for you to either another health professional or resources in the community. That's such great advice. And it's interesting because taking a page out of, out of your suggestions, what I've been doing is that every day I've been speaking to people like yourself and you know, in all different disciplines, whether someone who just, you know, startup tech company, someone who just built a new app, someone who has this cool platform and so on. And I find it very mentally uplifting for me because, you know, you turn on cable news and, you know, you know how it is, a bunch of boxes and everyone yelling at each other. <laughs> you go online, everyone's arguing with each other. And then it's such a disconnect because then when I speak to people like you and all these other folks on a regular basis, so sometimes two, three times a day, I'm blown away by, wow, they're doing something so super cool. This is, I never thought of, this is really interesting. This is amazing. And I end up feeling really energized by it because, you know, number one, you have that interaction, that personal contact that you're talking about. So even though it's still online as opposed to in person, but it, but it's, it works, it's helpful. But then also it reaffirms my positive outlook because, okay, it's not all doom, gloom, negative. No, I'm speaking to all these people for some reason they're not talked enough about because like you mentioned, you know, fear sells the other stuff, not as much, but it's out there, which is really good. And another part is when, as a Gen Xer, when I was working, no one could care less about your mental health or emotional well being. It wasn't a thing. And now almost yeah. every executive I speak to, that's really the front burner. Now the cynic in me could say, well, cause it's a war for talent, a great resignation. So, you have no choice but to do these things because you don't want to lose your best and brightest. But I do believe a lot of people have kind of, after two years, the switch went on and go, wait, we can't take people for granted anymore. We really have to take care of them. So they do offer, whether free tuition, whether your services, whether it's gym memberships, you know, fitness membership. So you could see they're all trying really hard to take care of their employees, which to me is fantastic to see. That's one of the best, to, in my opinion, that's one of the many positive things. If you can say there's a positive thing coming out of the pandemic is that this complete turnaround where now the focus is on how do we empower workers? How do we inject more positivity into the workplace? How do we make them happier? And that's so cool to see. And, and you're part of it, which is awesome too, which I imagine is good for you, right? For your own mental health, that you know you're helping people every day. Yeah, no, there's so much in, in what, what you said there, Jack. I mean, and, and I, I actually don't believe, you know, the, the, that it's because of the war in talent and things, mm -hmm. because this concern about people's uh, health and well-being and mental health, it started right at the beginning of the pandemic, where we weren't thinking about a war on mm -hmm. talent. Like, when that was the exact <laughs> opposite. You know, these CEOs, you know, business leaders started to, to realize, oh, wow, I this is impacting yeah. human beings. Yeah. I'm really, truly concerned about the people who, who work inside my organization. And, and, and it became pretty clear that, you know, that not only was it um, driven from a, a human perspective, but war and talent aside, your business sustainability, your business continuity really depended on your people, individuals being at their best, feeling supported, you know, feeling uh, that, the, that, that, that empathy because that allowed them to move forward. You know, the, the, the changes that happened wrapped around the world twice in terms of just how extraordinary it, it was. You know, we had, we had the whole world turned upside down, but the world kept going. That happened because individual, in, in, individuals had the power and the mental foresight to move forward. And the way that they were able to do that was because of the support that was put around them. So, you know, it's a business continuity issue. It's a business sustainability issue, as well as it's a human, human issue. And those things are not going to go away once this war on talent kind of settles down or when the pandemic goes down, we've had the light bulb uh, open up. And, and I also just think people are amazing. Like I said, I mean, we hear a lot of negative things uh, but the, the amount of positive things that have happened as well during the different phases of crisis is, is quite a, a, extraordinary. More donations uh, to hospitals, individuals, you know, helping each other out, managers and employees collaborating in, in terms of how do we make this situation work when I've got three kids at home or homeschooling and whatever, like really finding ways to, to be supportive. 
And when you give support, it actually does help you as well. You know, just having that opportunity to, to be meaningful in the life of somebody else, it helps them, but it actually mentally helps the person who's providing that support. That might not be the motivation, but that's a wonderful second result. This is great. You, you know, uh, you made me feel much better. <laughs> this, is part of, this is what I needed. I got to tell you, watching the videos of what's going on, I, 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 as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm big enough to admit it. I'm, I was like, wow, this is, this is rough, but you made me feel better. And I imagine the people watching here feel the same thing because, you know, you walked through and it makes sense what you can do and how you can take action and gave kind of examples of what to do. And that's what I think people need to do is like, okay, yes, you might be feeling bad now, but here's what you could do. Here's the proactive tips you could kind of put into place and, and make it better for yourself and make change and, and make it better for other, all the people around you. And so that's, that's such a great message. I'm so, it's just, it just was weird and coincidental or maybe it was meant to be that you were on for today to do it because it was so timely. You know what I mean? The advice you're giving, given what's happening now and what people are going through is so timely and so important. And if, before we go, I just want you to maybe you like to share how people can get in touch with you and your organization. Um, whether email, website, whatever you feel the best way for people to contact you. Absolutely. I mean, um, the name of the organization is, is LifeWorks and our URL, our website is lifeworks.com. Uh, there will be a way for you to reach us there, depending on the need that you have. And like I said, we have a broad range of services. We provide employee assistance services. We provide complex mental health uh, services. We provide support to students, post-secondary students, uh, financial well-being advice. Just think about it as an organization that can help individuals and to help organizations help their people be at their best, you know, you know whether they're really just looking to make sure that they're building resilience uh, or there is a really serious and immediate crisis uh, that somebody needs to help them in working through. So lifeworks.com. This is perfect. And, and, you know, if you're okay with it, I definitely would love to, well, I know you have regular uh, surveys and studies that give all the data, you know, keep me posted because I'd love to write about it and the elements we do here. So in addition to the podcast and people watching it now, and then people watch it when we, you know, edit it and bring it back on social media, then we could also have a companion piece of like, Hey, here's like almost like a how to for leaders, what to do, how to for people, what to do. And, and I think it's helpful. I think people need it. And I think that's great, you know, that we could do it. And you've just given so much information. I really appreciate your time, Paula. This was fantastic. I think this is what a lot of people needed right now. So I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, definitely. Thank you so a much. Pleasure. All right. Excellent. Take care. Well, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.